chapter thirty seven of a popular history of the art of music from the earliest times until the present by w s b matthews this librivox recording is in the public domain italian opera during the nineteenth century the strongest personality of the italian composers though by no means the loveliest at the beginning of the nineteenth century was that of gasparo spontini seventeen seventy four eighteen fifty one he was born of peasant stock in the roman states and educated at naples where his boyish successes were made in eighteen o three he went to paris where he composed several operas with very poor success nevertheless having full confidence in his own powers he was not discouraged and in eighteen o four his one act opera of milton was performed successfully at the theatre Fédo he had already begun his la vestale which was brought out in eighteen o seven and immediately achieved a remarkable success spontini was appointed compositeur particulier to the empress josephine in spite of which an oratorio of his was hissed from the stage in holy week of the same year that his vestale had been so favorably received the popularity of the vestal continued to grow so that it had been performed more than two hundred times in paris before eighteen twenty four in italy and germany where its career began in eighteen eleven its popularity was similar his next opera was fernand cortez eighteen o nine afterward materially improved these two works mark the highest point reached by spontini they are brilliant martial vigorous and spectacular and the legitimate predecessors of the meyerbeer grand operas spontini's smaller works failed and in eighteen nineteen negotiations were concluded with king william the third who had been impressed with la vestale when he had visited paris whereby for twenty years spontini was made director-general of the opera in berlin in this position he produced a number of other works the best being nurmahal eighteen twenty two alcidor eighteen twenty five and agnes von hohenstaufen eighteen twenty nine spontini was a vigorous director but unprincipled vain and narrow nevertheless at his concerts he produced the fifth and seventh symphonies of beethoven for the first time in berlin as well as parts of the great bach mass in b minor and much other great music opposition to his tyranny culminated in eighteen forty two by his dismission from the directorship meyerbeer being his successor his popularity paled from the production of weber's der freischutz in eighteen twenty one spontini died in his native town of majolitat the italian composer most famous in the earlier part of the century was joachino antonio rossini seventeen ninety two eighteen sixty eight a native of pesaro a small town on the adriatic after a short course at the conservatory of verona the boy commenced to compose and no less than thirteen short pieces preceded his first really popular opera tancredi which was produced at la fenice in venice in eighteen thirteen the success of this work led to many others among which the best known are the italian in algiers the turk in italy and in eighteen sixteen no less than five operas in one year torvaldo e dorlisca the barber of seville la gazzetta and otello his first serious opera he composed with the utmost facility the barber one of the most successful operas ever performed and one of rossini's works which bids fair to outlast the rest was composed and mounted within a month for this work he received eighty pounds sterling it was not at first successful in eighteen twenty three he brought out semiramide which was only moderately successful at first the next turn in rossini's fortune found him in london where he had accepted an engagement with the manager of king's theatre and here he produced a number of his former works with moderate success 
rossini himself appeared upon the stage and sang the solos in a cantata which he had composed in honor of the king george the fourth he turned many honest pennies during his london engagement by acting as accompanist at private soirees for a fee of fifty pounds at the end of five months he found himself in possession of seven thousand pounds with which he made a graceful retreat to paris where he accepted the musical direction of the theatre italien at the salary of eight hundred pounds per year this was in eighteen twenty six after the expiration of his engagement at this theatre several of his works were produced at the grand opera among which were the siege of corinth and moise march twenty seven eighteen twenty seven this work which is given in england as an oratorio was a revised edition of his opera of mose which he had written for naples five years before the most taking number in it is the famous prayer which has been played and sung in every form possible for a popular melody the operatic career of rossini ended in eighteen twenty nine with the production of his opera of william tell at the paris academie with a brilliant cast in this work he forswears florid writing and makes a serious effort at dramatic characterization the opera is extremely melodious and a very great advance over any of his former productions having now accumulated a fortune he retired from the stage and lived the remainder of his life near paris in elegant leisure composing a solemn mass and a few other sacred works but no other operas in reviewing the career of this singularly gifted italian melodist it is impossible to resist the conclusion that his talents were worthy of a nobler development among his sacred works the stabat mater is the most popular it contains some very beautiful chromatic writing and is really an artwork of a distinguished merit his latest work was the mes solonel eighteen sixty four rossini was fond of good living very witty in conversation and his house was frequented by the most brilliant wits and the best artists of the thirty years between william tell and his death upon the whole the most brilliant master of italian opera during this period was gaetano donizetti seventeen ninety seven eighteen forty eight who was born at bergamo and educated at naples his first opera was produced in vienna in eighteen eighteen but his first complete success was anna bolena which was written for milan in eighteen thirty the principal parts having been taken by pasta and rubini soon after this followed l'elisir d'amore eighteen thirty two lucia di la marmore naples eighteen thirty five lucrezia borgia eighteen thirty four belisario eighteen thirty six poliuto eighteen thirty eight la fille du regiment eighteen forty la favorita linda di chamouni eighteen forty two don pasquale eighteen forty three besides these well-known works there were many others the total number reaching sixty-three brought out in various italian theatres and in paris donizetti's traits as a composer are pleasant melody effective concerted pieces as for instance the sextet in lucia which is perhaps the best concerted piece in italian opera and a good constructive ability like rossini he was a writer of florid music and lucia remains one of the favorite numbers of coloratura singers to the present day which considering that more than fifty years have intervened since it was composed is a great compliment vincenzo bellini eighteen o two eighteen thirty five was born at catania in switzerland the son of an organist he was educated at naples under zingarelli his first opera having been composed in eighteen twenty six while he was still a member of the conservatory it was bianca e fernando produced at san carlos his next work il pirata was written for la scala in milan the tenor part having been especially designed for the celebrated rubini 
among the other successful operas of this composer were i capuletti e i montecchi in eighteen thirty la sonambula eighteen thirty one at la scala norma and i puritani it was this latter work which contains a brilliant duet for two basses suona la tromba of which rossini wrote from paris to a friend at milan it is unnecessary for me to write of the duet for two basses you must have heard it bellini was essentially a melodist a lyric composer of idealic naivete of dramatic power he had very little his orchestration is simple although frequently very sonorous if he had lived to the age of donizetti or of rossini it is not impossible that much greater works would have emanated from his pen for in his next great successor we have an example of such a growth under conditions less favorable than those promised in bellini's case the most vigorous of all the italian composers of this epoch is giuseppe verdi who was born at roncoli october ninth eighteen thirteen his father having been a small innkeeper the boy was of a quiet melancholy character with one passion music and when he was seven years of age his father purchased a spinet for his practice when he was ten years old he was appointed organist of the church in his native town at this time his necessary expenditures amounted to about twenty-two dollars per year and his salary as organist seven dollars and twenty cents which after many urgent appeals was increased to eight dollars in addition he had certain perquisites from weddings and funerals amounting to about ten dollars per year in this way he continued until he was sixteen having by this time become conductor of a philharmonic society and the composer of quite a number of works at the little town of Duceto he went to milan where he was refused admission to the conservatory on the ground of his showing no special aptitude for music nevertheless he persevered in his chosen vocation receiving lessons from rolla the conductor of la scala he studied diligently for two years mozart's don giovanni being a part of his daily exercise after this he returned for five years to his country life and by the time he was twenty-five he was back again in milan in the hope of securing the performance of his opera oberto this for quite a long time he was unable to do but at length in eighteen thirty nine it was performed at la scala the moderate success of this work secured him an engagement to produce an opera every eight months for milan or vienna but his first work a comic opera which the managers demanded un giorno di regno was a dead failure and disgusted the composer to such a point that he declared that he would never write again at this time verdi was the victim of most severe affliction in addition to poverty within the space of about two months he experienced the loss of his two children and of his wife to whom he was devotedly attached after living some time in milan he received a copy of the libretto il proscritto and in eighteen forty two it was performed it was well staged and achieved an unqualified success then followed i lombardi eighteen forty three ernani eighteen forty four i due foscari eighteen forty four attila eighteen forty six macbeth eighteen forty seven rigoletto eighteen fifty one il trovatore eighteen fifty three la traviata eighteen fifty three les vepres sicilienes eighteen fifty five un ballo in maschera eighteen fifty nine la forza del destino eighteen sixty two don carlos eighteen sixty seven aida eighteen seventy one otello eighteen eighty seven in addition to these works he has written a great requiem mass and many smaller works besides the operas above mentioned there were several others now mostly forgotten the total number being twenty-nine and there is not one of them that does not contain more or less of striking melody with effective concerted pieces and choruses verdi's melody was much more vigorous than that of either of his predecessors 
in trovatore there are ten or twelve numbers which have become famous in the barrel organ repertory his instrumentation was very full and sonorous and his dramatic instinct excellent we do not find the long roulades and ornamental passages according to the taste of his predecessors but instead of them clear sharp concise manly melodies unfortunately however they are so near the line of the vulgar that only a refined treatment on the part of the singer can save them for poetry and beauty beginning with aida a very important change can be seen in verdi's style by the time this work was undertaken the wagnerian theories were attracting general attention and it was impossible that a man of verdi's intellectual force should have failed to be affected by them aida is much more refined and dramatically truthful than any of those before it as the composer was now an old man nothing farther was expected from his pen nevertheless in otello he has given the world a masterpiece of a still higher order the music throughout being subservient to the story while the dramatic handling of the work is masterly in the extreme for this he was in part indebted to his librettist the distinguished poet and composer signor arrigo boito the strangest thing in regard to verdi is that at the present writing eighteen ninety one he is engaged upon a comic opera falstaff a subject which he says has interested him for about forty years but which until now he has never had time to undertake as a man and a patriot verdi is held in the highest possible honor in italy and for his own original genius as displayed in his works and especially in his aptitude for progress no less than for his dignified and simple private life he deserves to be admired as the foremost italian master of the present century one of the most earnest among italian composers and musicians is arrigo boito eighteen forty two who from an origin which is german from his mother's side possesses an earnestness and force in music not usual in southern lands after composing two cantatas which had a good success his grand opera of mephistophele was produced at milan in eighteen sixty eight and later in other leading cities two more operas hero and leander and nero are not yet published m boito is equally celebrated in his own country as musician and as poet in the latter capacity he prepared his own librettos besides furnishing that of otello to verdi and la gioconda to poncielli he has published several books of poems and other operatic works as composer he partakes much of the spirit of wagner he has yet another opera nearly completed but in eighteen ninety one little is known of it it is called orestiade amilcare poncielli eighteen thirty four eighteen sixty six is generally regarded in italy as having been the most distinguished italian composer after verdi he was educated at milan but his early triumphs were made elsewhere his famous i promessi sposi having been performed there only in eighteen seventy two his principal works are the preceding which was composed in eighteen fifty six la savoyarda eighteen sixty one roderico eighteen sixty four la stella del monte eighteen sixty seven la gioconda his masterwork produced at la scala eighteen seventy six and marion de lorme eighteen eighty five his music occupies a middle ground between the melodiousness of the italian composers of the early part of the century and the seriousness of later german opera in spite of the few examples reaching foreign countries there is a continuous and rather abundant production of light and serious operas in italy every principal theatre making it a point to bring out one or more new works every season the best of these after a long interval become known abroad it is a great mistake to suppose that the few italian operas of recent date performed in england and america adequately represent the present state of italian art End of chapter thirty seven